Potentially, the Keogh report could have quite a significant effect on practitioners. Uh, perhaps for consultants who are working in NHS practice, um, there'll be little change. Uh, but for a number of cosmetic surgeons who haven't worked within the NHS, they're going to find that they need to meet new standards for cosmetic surgery practice, undergo further training and achieve accreditation. This might mean that in um, areas where they're not practicing very frequently and undertaking only a very few procedures in a year, that they won't be able to undertake those procedures anymore. Uh, there's a general correlation in terms of risks and adverse outcomes between uh, practitioners who are undertaking procedures that they only do perhaps once or twice or three times a year um, and an adverse outcome um, occurring. So that's an important thing uh, to address and that will affect people's practice. The Care Quality Commission um, will become um, involved um, and they'll be involved in regulating and inspecting uh, cosmetic providers. So that will be something uh, quite new. The um, need, oh sorry, um, okay, there'll also be a need to uh, review indemnity cover. Um, there are concerns that indemnity cover has been inadequate um, and both UK and overseas surgeons will be required to carry uh, quite significantly greater amounts of indemnity cover so that they can cover any accidents that um, occur. It's also recommended that providers make provision for the occasion when they become insolvent or otherwise dissolve the business. Uh, so they'll need to enter into risk pooling schemes or take out specialist insurance cover uh, in order to cover those events so that you don't get left with somebody who's been harmed by a treatment and they've got nobody that they can obtain compensation from. The biggest and perhaps most publicised change is in relation to the non-surgical um, procedures and that's where the industry has really expanded, so um, the Botox injections and fillers and so on. Um, and now non-surgical practitioners will need to go undergo accredited training at the moment, there's a lot of training courses around and people do um, dutifully go and undertake um, appropriate training, but it's not accredited, so you don't know how valid that training is. They're also going to, be ne going to need to be subject to greater supervision um, by uh, cl clinical practitioners. And I think most people would agree that that must be appropriate most of the public would be quite concerned to think that somebody who was providing a quasi-medical treatment didn't actually have any training in infection control, for example, or um, the adverse side effects that can um, arise. So I think they'll be reassured by those, um, those changes. It will also be necessary for the non-surgical practitioners to be registered uh, with uh, the CQC and guidance will be issued uh, which will require uh, training and uh, annual appraisal to ensure that their levels of competence are increased. Another aspect which is going to have an impact on uh, uh, businesses in this area is the prohibition on certain um, advertising practice practices. Um, that will affect their marketing and may require them to rethink their business model um, and certainly to liaise with their, um, their advertising uh, providers. Uh, there are going to be prohibitions on time-limited deals, on financial um, inducements and also stricter control on the use of uh, photography and before and after photographs, for example. Um, so that may change how some businesses are uh, run or uh, um, undertake their marketing. So I think those are the main effects on practitioners.